Welcome to the solutions for the modern physics problem set numbers one, two, and three. We'll get started right away here. Uh, let's read the question and highlight essential information. Will high frequency light eject a greater number of electrons from a photosensitive surface than low frequency light, assuming both frequencies are above the threshold frequency? This question is clearly testing our knowledge of the photoelectric effect and what factors control various variables. Let's reread it again real quick. Will high frequency light eject a greater number of electrons? Eject a greater number of electrons from a photosensitive surface than low frequency light. Assuming both frequency is above the threshold frequency. What are they asking us? The section that's underlined here, eject a greater number of electrons. The number of electrons ejected, you might remember from our notes, if we go to back to page one of our note packet there, is called photocurrent. So we go back to that page, page one in our, uh, in our notes, and what was the conclusion drawn? What is it that it impacts affects the rate of photocurrent. Is it frequency? And the answer is no. Photocurrent is affected by intensity Remember the other word we used for that was brightness. Of light. Not frequency. Okay, so this is one of the really important conclusions drawn by the, pho by the photoelectric experiments is that photocurrent was only affected by the brightness of the light shining on the metal, not by the frequency. So this is kind of a trick question. Uh, the answer is neither. Neither will impact it because it's only affected by brightness. All right, let's move on to question two. Potassium in a photocell emits photoelectrons when struck by blue light. So when potassium is struck, It emits photoelectrons when struck by blue light. Tungsten emits them only when ultraviolet light is used. A, which metal has a higher threshold frequency? So for A, uh, is the threshold frequency greater for potassium or is it greater for tungsten? So if we go to the reference table on page two at the top where the electromagnetic spectrum is, what they're really asking us to compare here is the frequency of blue. And how does that compare to the frequency of ultraviolet? We'll call it UV. When we go and when we look that up and we scroll across, we can see that the frequency of ultraviolet light is greater than the frequency of blue light. So the question, which metal has a higher threshold frequency? Um, tungsten would be your answer there. FO is greater in the ultraviolet than in blue. Okay? B, which metal has a higher work function? Okay? In order to answer B, we have to know what work function is. Um, and I believe the symbol for that, if we remember that from page four of our photoelectric effect notes, the symbol for that was phi. Well, what's the equation that relates phi to frequency? And that, of course, is phi equals HFO. 
And from this, we can see that phi has a direct relationship with the threshold frequency, and threshold frequency FO. Uh, so therefore, uh, which metal has a higher work function would once again be tungsten. Okay. Since it has greater threshold frequency. Okay. All right, and lastly, uh, number three, we have the stopping potential of a certain metal is five volts. Stopping potential, V, is five volts. What is the maximum kinetic energy? I think we would call that Ke max of the photoelectrons. And they want this answer in electron volts and in joules. Okay, so now it comes, our answer here for A is going to come down to what's the connection, what's the relationship between stopping potential and maximum kinetic energy. If we go to page two of our notes, to give you a moment to flip back there, we can see that's the apparatus that was used to calculate the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. Well, how did they do that? Well, you'll recall that it, the calculation originated from the work energy theorem, where the work done by the electric field caused a change in the electron's kinetic energy. What it boiled down to was that the stopping potential times the charge of the electron equals the maximum kinetic energy of the ejected electrons. So we can actually look at it both ways here. Ke max is going to be, and the stopping potential in this problem was given as 5 volts. So there's our 5 volts of stopping potential now. When we want the answer in electron volts, we express our Q value in numbers of elementary charges. And this is easy for this because we're, in this problem, stopping one electron so we put 1E substituted in for Q. It makes it nice and easy. 5 times 1 is 5 and the units would be electron volts. If we want the answer in joules, it's going to start out very similar, but then when we substitute, still 5 volts of stopping potential. This time though when we substitute for Q, if we want the answer in joules, our Q, our charge has to be in coulombs. And that of course would be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, the charge of an electron, and we get the answer here to be 8.0 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So there's your answer in joules, and there's your answer in electron volts. Alrighty, that'll do it for the modern physics problem set for the Regents course, numbers 1 through 3.